Hey, this is Dr. Shea from The Dentalist. In the last video, we learned the four steps of selecting the dental material for your use. Be sure to watch that video first if you haven't. Today, we'll see how different dental materials are evaluated through a strict process before being available on the market for clinical use. Materials prior to recommendation are gone through specific standardization tests in which they're evaluated from different aspects. A fatigue mechanism test is one of the examples of the standard specification test in which the strength and resistance of the material to fatigue is checked, simulating more of what actually happens in the oral cavity. Another way of checking the quality of the material is through the laboratory evaluation in which the materials are passed through tests like simple solubility tests that would indicate the stability of the material in aqueous media. As you know, for filling material, being soluble is not favorable because the environment that the material resides in is saliva. So prior evaluation of the material in the laboratory is very important. Note that all the tests that the materials go through are solely done to correlate the results with the clinical scenarios. For example, if a material is taken through the compression test, the purpose of this test is to correlate the result to a clinical scenario, which would take the material to be under occlusal load. Thus, compression tests would give us an idea of the strength of the material and its ability to bear the occlusal load or relative loads in the oral cavity. Third, and the most important way that the national and international standard organizations use to check the quality of the material is through clinical trials. Clinical trials are usually done in a controlled environment, usually a teaching hospital or a dental department where the dentist uses the new material and observes it for a period of time and gives his verdict whether the material stayed successful for the period of time or not. Now listen carefully, it is mostly possible that a material that passes the quality test at the laboratory could fail the quality test when passed through the clinical trials because in laboratories they can simulate the environment of the oral cavity and can even reach closer to it. But laboratory can never replace the actual oral environment. Therefore, clinical trials would always be a great tool to evaluate the quality of the material. So majority of dental material manufacturers make sure that their materials go through a randomized controlled clinical trial before throwing their stuff in the market. So to sum it up, materials go through three types of evaluation for their quality. The first one is standard evaluation. The second is laboratory evaluation. And then the third one is the clinical trials itself. I hope you got the whole idea of how evaluation of a dental material is done to ensure best quality and high standards. I'm sure you're now able to explain this to me right now. 20 seconds on the clock, tell me the three types of evaluation that a dental material goes through for its quality. Your time starts now. Good job with today's topic, my friends. And yes, congratulations, you have finished the first chapter of Dental Material Sciences. Now give it a good read from the book and get ready for the second chapter, as in the next video, we're gonna talk about the properties used to characterize the material. That's all for now, my friends. This is Dr. Shake saying goodbye to you. Take care till we meet again.